Welcome everybody. This video is on how to calculate the uh, linear regression of some points. Okay, so I created my own points. I have an x-axis uh, and I have a y-axis. Um, first thing we need to do is create a scatter plot. So to do a scatter plot, go up to your first data in your upper left hand corner hit left click and then scan down to the bottom let go of your left click on your mouse come up to insert and then move over to scatter and click on scatter and then we want dots so we don't want any lines and connecting our scatter dot is just uh, just a whole bunch of points on a graph and there's my scatter I'm going to bring up my graph up here. Now, these are all these dots are the X and the Ys, right? The X column is the X axis. The Y uh, is the vertical. The X is the horizontal. Um, these are just a whole bunch of dots on a graph. Now, this is what companies do. They collect this data, and they have all these dots on a graph. What they want to do is figure out where these dots are going. Now, it obviously, it looks, it starts low and goes high. The dots are going up. But how are they going up? How can we predict what something is going to be in the future uh, And if we have an X and a Y? It just depends on what data we're looking at. Um, so we're going to create a linear regression, a straight line that fits into this data. So that's what a linear regression line is. It's a straight line that fits into this data. In order to create that straight line, go to any of your data points, any of these points. So I'm going into this one. I'm going to right-click my mouse, right-click, go down to add a trend line. So in your reading, you've heard trend line. Trend line is a linear regression line. It's a, tr a line that tells you where your graph is trending to. Click on trend line. And there's a couple of things I want. I want the equation for the trend line. So down at the very bottom, it says display the equation. And then display the R squared value. And go through your book and figure out what this R squared value is. It tells you how, how, um, what the slope is and how good that, uh, that slope is or that trend in, in your data is. So go ahead and read that in your book. So I'm clicking on both of those, the equation uh, and the R squared value of the chart. And then I hit close, and I have my data, my, my trend line. That's the line where it's going. You could have tried to predict and draw a straight line yourself, but this is the trend line where the data fits. Now, here's the equation and all that. I'm going to move this over. I want to just move this equation. There we go. I'm going to move the equation over. Now, this, if you look at the top line, it says y equals 1.1135 plus 16.59. This is y equals mx plus b. This is a linear equation. Um, remember from algebra, m is the slope of the equation. So the slope of this equation is 1.1235. The y-intercept, the point where our graph crosses the y-axis right here, is at 16.591. The B is the y-intercept. Do you see where the line, it crosses? If you kept going with the line, it would cross at 16.591. And then R squared is 0.4. And you can determine, uh, once again, in your reading what that means. Now, a very high R, like uh, 0.99 or 0 0.80, that means we can predict your trend pretty good. 0 0.40, it's going to be kind of hard to predict the trend. It's not a perfect prediction because your data, if you notice, all your data is all over the place here. All right, so we did that. Um, next, I'd like to do the same thing. I want to do the exact same thing that we did here, except I'm going to switch the X and the Y uh, columns, my X column and my Y columns. Uh, the next part, of it, I think the assignment says, hey, let's just switch those two and see what happens. So for the X, I'm going to just copy.
and then I'm going to paste it right below here. I'm going to put it in the Y column down here. Let me put it right here. And hit paste. And I have my data. Now I'm going to take the Y and I'm going to copy that. Right click. Hit copy. And I'll put it right here. And hit paste. Now this is going to be my new X and my new Y. So I just switch positions of it. Uh, the if you look at the instructions, it says just switch positions of it. Basically, that's what it says. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a scatter plot. Uh, highlight your data. Insert. Scatter. Put the dots there. And here's my, new, my second scatter plot. I want to do a trend line. Pick any data point. Right click. Add a trend line. Display the 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 uh, equation. Display the R value, and make sure linear is pushed up here. There's different kind of trend lines. You can have an exponential trend line, logarithmic, polynomial. We are linear, so I want to stress that. Make sure your linear trend line is pushed, uh, and then hit close. And we have our trend line. I'm gonna bring my data over here, and then answer some questions. Look at this equation. Look at this equation. Look at the R squared in this problem. Look at the R squared in this problem. Uh, what do you see that are similar, or different, or higher? Make sure you answer the questions uh, that are in the book. Uh, there are two other things that we need to try to figure out um, in the, uh, I think, in the next problem uh, is standard error of estimates. So, how to compute. How to compute the standard error of estimates? Okay, to, f to compute the standard error of estimates, we're going to go to our function. Click on function. Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to do also. Um, and we're going to click on statistical. So my, uh, my statistical is up. And we're going to find the uh, standard error of estimates. And let me show you which, which is. That's the S-T-E-Y-X. Uh, sim, uh, S T E Y X, S T E Y X, standard error of estimates, and I click on that. Now I'm going to put my answer to the standard error estimates in this box. Um, now be careful. It says what are your y's and what are your x's. So I'm going to do the standard error estimate for this second equation. Just to show you how to do this, I don't think the, the first problem told you ask you to do this. Maybe the second one does. Uh, so I want my data for my Y. I'm in my Y box. I want all my Y data. I click on it, and my Y data is there. Now I click on my X data box. It's kind of opposite because they want the Ys first. So And then I click on my and drag down my X data box. I have that in my box. I hit OK. And now if you look over here on the right hand side, standard error of estimates, I have 5.678. I have my standard error estimates. So the, 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 uh, the code that, that you're looking for is S-T-E-Y-X, the standard error of estimates, uh, when you go up to your function, when you go up to your function box. STV statistic make sure you're in statistical and then go to STEYX right there all right and there's one more the correlation coefficient I want to look up the co the correlation coefficient Okay, so to find that, go back up to your function box. Do, do, do. Uh, make sure you're in statistical. And we're going to look for C O R R E L. C O 
R R E L. There it is. And I'm going to click on it. C O, do you see up here? C O R R E L. And we're going to do our same thing, our, our array of data. And I'm just going to click on all the data, see what happens. It's not taking it. So I'm going to go here. It doesn't say X or Y. And because it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go to my second set of data, the Y part, and then I hit OK, and I have my coral, my correlation coefficient R, C O R R E L. And just to prove, let me let me try this again. I want to do the same thing. Most recently used. I'm going to try the same thing, except in array 1, I'm going to put the Y. And in the, oh, sorry. And then in array 2, I'm going to put the X. Let me try that again. There we go. Click on the second box and hit OK. And if you notice, it didn't matter. Do you see it? It told you you put the one data and the other. I have the exact same answer over here for both. So in that one, it didn't tell us to put the X first and the Y first. It just says one string of data and then another string of data. And if you notice, you get the same answer. Now there was one more part to part one. Uh, it, it, it talked about going to question one and entering in $20,000 and predict your answer. Well, in, but then it says, well, we're not using 20,000. We're using 20 because it's in thousands. So I'd like you to do that. Predict what Y is going to be when X is 20. So if you look at your graph here on this first graph, predict what Y is going to be. Here's 20. I'm going to go straight up. I'm predicting what Y is going to be. Look at your trend line. It looks like for 20, my Y is going to be somewhere around 37. Well, how do we predict that? There's uh, a... Uh, a function that you could use, say, forecast. So, and, and this is in your book. I'm sure you read it in your book. It's, uh, I mean, not in your book. It's in your uh, Excel guide. So you go to function. Make sure you're in statistical mode. There we go. And we're going to go to forecast. Here's forecast. Click on forecast. You see how we have forecast? We want to forecast an X value. So, uh, I think the book says predict 20, so I'm going to put 20 in for X, and then we want to do our Y data and our X data. Our Y data, I'm highlighting our Y data, putting it in there, then clicking on the X box, highlighting my X data, and hit OK. And if you notice, it says right here, this is my forecast when X equals 20. So. It's telling you what the line, if I could only spell, it's telling you what the Y value will be if your X is 20. X is 20 if I go straight, I guess I didn't go straight up. Straight up, I said 37, but the answer is over here, 39. So on that line, if your X value is 20, your Y value should be 39. So that's predicting. I mean, down the future, you can actually predict uh, you know, if I had 50 items, what would the, the Y value be? And this is how companies do this. They use that trend line and they say, okay, if our trend is, you know, good, what will the Y value be if we have a certain X value? All right, I hope this video helps you. Um, 
If you have any questions, always feel free to contact me.